Okay, so we'll talk fertility real quick in stage one. Not a huge issue um, in terms of, you know, the plants aren't really taking up a lot of, uh, of the nutrition that you're going to be putting out. Um, and obviously, leaching is a challenge in propagation, as we've talked about, if you over missed. Um, but when you get to the back end of stage one, you're going to start to callus. You're going to start to transfer water between the, the cutting and the soil. And at that point, you want to have a little bit of BC in there. And so what I've found is one of the best ways to do that is to have, uh, to utilize a foliar uh, fertilization, uh, you know, put, put a little bit of feed in that mist so that, you know, if you are, or as you do build up uh, uh, moisture in the soil, um, it's actually got a little bit of EC in it. And even though you're leaching it out, perhaps, there's still some, some fertilizer content in there. So we recommend approximately somewhere around a 50 part per million um, with low to, to most, uh, the best scenario would be zero uh, phosphorus in that, uh, in that foliar fertilizer. Yeah, definitely got to be beware of your phosphorus at this point. I've seen, I, I know growers that uh, are, have a very effective use of nature source at this uh, juncture as their first feeds and propagation because it will give you the complete feed and it, it, it just does not act like a phosphorus bearing feed. Yeah, it's a tough one though, I think for, uh, for overhead in the mist, in the mm -hmm. mist system because of plugging up nozzles, but yeah. So just to expand a little bit more on phosphorus, um, if you've propagated poinsettias with overhead mist, you've seen these strapped leaves in that picture there on the right hand side. Um, that's pretty standard if you've got a little bit too much phosphorus in the water or water quality is a challenge, you'll see those strapped leaves. Probably means you over it a little bit as well. Um, I've seen that for sure in the past. And so that's why we would recommend any kind of foliar feed has zero phosphorus in it. And uh, you know, but what we don't wanna create is, is what could be called phosphobia or you're just scared to use any, any kind of phosphorus because um, as these plants start to root and start to grow, you're gonna need phosphorus to be a part of the, uh, the complete fertilizer uh, package. We don't wanna have a, any kind of a phosphorus deficiency starting up on those lower leaves. So I just wanted to pipe in here is this is, as a guy, you know, I travel all over looking at poinsettias and I've watched this trend, you know, certainly evolve um, to, to go to these very low or no phosphorus regimes um, and feeding earlier. And what we see a lot of is with guys doing just like 14 or 14 or 17 or 17, 15 or 15, um, as, their, as their, their feeds in prop, they'll come out of prop showing this, and this is phosphorus deficiencies. It, we've always, you see that little kind of rabbit tracky thing and, and it's a very kind of unique, distinct pattern. We've always never really paid a lot of attention to it. But what you do see is when you do have that, there is a little bit of slowdown in the grow out. So you, you just kind of keep an eye on that, that lower leaf. That's a good indicator that when you do get it transplanted, that you probably will want to make sure you give it a good shot of a full complete feed to replace the phosphorus, which has been depleted in prop. Gary, what, uh, what EC, now naturally during this time, you're more likely you don't have a starter charge in, and you're building your EC, but we haven't really got to a callus. So, you know, really you're, you're kind of targeting a very low EC media, but eventually would you want to build and propagation to what type of EC would you kind of range give as being ideal? Well, I think it, 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 that's, a, that's a really loaded question, uh, James, because it's going to totally depend on the medium that you're in. If you're in a medium that's that's like an Ellie pot, for example, where you're going to hold some more moisture, you're going to hold more nutrient in the because you have a medium in the in the cube or in the in the the sleeve versus something like an oasis, which is kind of an inert uh, medium that has no cation exchange, no ability to hold it. So, I don't like to talk about media EC in the early stages at all. I like to think about uh, what are you doing to that foliage? Are you leaching all the feed out? Are you giving it a chance to replenish that feed in the foliage that you're leaching out? When you get a root on it and you start to grow, then you can you want to get to a point where you get them actively growing. I think you want to avoid a high EC to stunt the roots. And I think in a very wet environment you're talking about there in propagation, more you want to be careful not to drive the EC up too high because as they will dry down, as they root out, then the EC will raise, it'll be too high, those roots will be stressed, they'll damage the roots. So I don't think you should go about above about a 1.5 max in, in prop medium, but 
it's a hard way to kind of think about it in propagation. That's why I asked, so we can have a little bit of discussion about it. You know, I'm one of these guys that always preaches, uh, I'm, more impo- I'm more concerned about what's coming out of the hose, going into a crop if you're on a constant liquid feed regime, and what is the pH. The EC, if it's very actively growing point set of the EC will go away fast. So, so that's another conversation for the next webinar.